speaker will be Nikos Christodoulides, the president of Cyprus. Dear friends, never has uh, the European project, our union of 27 states that stand united in defense of common values and joint vision, been more valuable. Never have we needed a stronger, more resilient, more competitive union that is relevant in the daily lives of European citizens and is present as a strong global actor in the geopolitical arena. Today, we stand proudly at all that has been achieved in the past years. At the same time, we also stand before a, crucial, a critical juncture of our common home for the Union, and we look to the future. We have a responsibility to our children, to the generations to come, to lay the foundations and deliver an even stronger Union within Europe and in the world. Dear colleagues, as a historian by training, I'm always prone to glance inquisitively at the past in order to draw lenses that will inform decisions for the future. If we look back to the last few years, it is fair to say that we couldn't foresee that the pandemic would be at our doorstep. And yet, we face a challenge which had an immense impact on our economies and our way of life. In the face of this unforeseen, unprecedented challenge, the Union, in unity, rose to the challenge under Ursula's firm and able leadership, which proved to be absolutely key in not only addressing and overcoming the pandemic, but in emerging even stronger. The pandemic wasn't the only challenge we have had to face. My generation, dear friends, grow up believing that there was no fragility to the European peace project. And yet, on February 24th, we wake up to a new geopolitical reality with Ukraine, a sovereign European country invaded, its territorial integrity violated, international legality shattered. Cyprus, a victim of illegal invasion and half a century of continuous occupation, has stood in an wavering and unequivocal manner on the right side of the history. And we stand and we will continue to stand with Ukraine and its people as they fight Russian aggression. Moreover, dear friends, we have also waken up to the reality that there are no frozen conflicts. The war that is ravaging the Middle East in Europe's immediate neighborhood at Cyprus doorstep is a tragic proof to that. The European Union cannot afford not to have a strong voice and a role on what is happening in the Middle East, not only because it is an integral part of the European Union as a strategic global actor, but also because what, is, what happens in the Middle East has a serious impact on Europe, from migration to security. The humanitarian tragedy in Gaza also demands our immediate urgent attention. Cyprus is an integral part of the region as the closest EU member state in the region has worked tirelessly since the beginning of the war to design a humanitarian maritime corridor for the delivery of high volume of aid to the people in Gaza. And dear friends, I look forward to Ursula's visit to Cyprus tomorrow in the context of opening the Maritime Corridor. From the very first stages of the initiative, Ursula grasped the vision and value behind it and pulled her political weight and that of the commissions behind it. Thank you very much, Ursula. Dear friends, the discussions we're having in Brussels about a stronger Europe, a more geopolitical and strategically autonomous union that is a global actor is not theoretical. It must time and time again be proven in a concrete way. We must be able as a European Union to play an active role in dealing with all challenges. In order to materialize the European Union's geopolitical role, 
First and foremost, we must be able to rely on ourselves without always depending on external factors. Therefore, European Union strategic autonomy must not remain as an abstract idea, but rather an, a tangible objective to reach. And in this regard, building European defence at the Union level can be catalytic. Ursula has shown boldness and decisive leadership on this front as well, and the new industrial defence strategy announced earlier this week is an important step. Dear colleagues, beyond the external threat and challenges, Europe faces a multitude of internal ones. The rise of extremists, illiberal populists and anti-European Union forces threatens to reverse what we have achieved over the years. The only answer to this phenomenon is to build a better union for our citizens, a union of economic growth, job creation, competitiveness. It is up to us to stand firm and defend our values, the values that unite us, the values that differentiate us from our adversaries, the values that make us who we are. And as long as we defend our values, the APP will remain the biggest political family in Europe and the driving force for Europe's future. Dear friends, the APP has also consistently and prominently stood behind Cyprus in our efforts to reunify the, the country. I strongly believe that the European Union needs to be catalytic, unifying power for its last divided member state that 50 years after the Turkish invasion is still under occupation. In the coming months, I'm counting on the support of our extended political family and of course the European Union institutions leadership in our efforts towards the speedy resumption of talks for achieving a comprehensive settlement for the solution of the Cyprus problem. In concluding, dear Ursula, True leaders are shown at challenging times, at times that require boldness, even authenticity. And during your time, you stirred the ship in stormy waters, and you did it by building the union up through unparalleled tenacity, hard work, and determination. We are very proud to be standing beside you for the next five years. Thank you very much.